Boys and girls, welcome back to another episode of the Dorian Show. With pop, is it with popular demand? Did I say it correctly? Um, like I'm, like you're the popular de- demand guy. Yeah, why not? Why not? With popular demand, the return of John Beard. I don't think anyone has demanded it, but cool. Thank you for having me, Dorian. Dude, what's going on, dude? We're back at the most famous San Francisco bar. But we can't name it in an undisclosed location. But you guys should figure out where this is at. No, no. Yeah, if they know, they know. How's it going, man? Uh, very good. Got off work around four thirty. Uh, killed some time at the bar before doing this. So uh, excited to be here. I gotta ask you: Is since quitting your job as an attorney, have you been living the dream? Uh, no. It has been a uh, slog, but uh, I'm used to it. I've done it before, and, oh, yeah. uh, although I've grown, I've grown used to certain creature comforts that uh, uh, you don't have anymore. Exactly, mainly my vices. I mean, I can, I, I just need to be able to eat and drink with reckless abandon. Yeah, but uh, you can't do that. No, currently. no, but uh, it's fine. Uh, uh, what, when did we last speak? Uh, when was the last one that came out? I want to say at least six months ago. Okay, yeah. More, no, no, more than that. This I was I was gone already. I left the beginning of the year. Was it December or was it later? Was it early? It might be December or November. Yeah, I don't even know. Um, when did you quit your job? At that same time, Basically right? the very end of December. Right when I left. Yeah. Do so you regret it? Uh, no, because I didn't like personal injury law. I just didn't care for it. Okay. Wasn't my thing. Looking at mangled bodies. Did, did it take not, you? Mostly <laughs> limbs, not entire bodies, just limbs. Did it take you a while to adjust your new lifestyle? You know what I mean? Like you were living life, just drinking out of the bars. I mean, I guess that's the issue, right? You could afford to drink at home, but you like to. I liked, well, I like to write in bars. Right. So I need to be able to drink at bars. Uh, is everything okay, Dorian? Yeah. You were jumping so. around. Yeah, it's on. We can always restart it. No, nope, it's too to. late. We have, we've gone on to a great start. Uh, have we? Yeah. All right. Yeah, so, uh, no, I just was uh, going out and about. Uh, ended up uh, spending whatever money I had. Uh, then realized I had to get a job. I was substitute teaching, and then mm. the uh, year, the school year ended. And so then I was like, well, what am I going to do? So right now I've been working at a hardware store. Nice. Which is fascinating. And that, that can be, a, it's a wonderful how, place. How much of a pay cut are you taking from your attorney job as a percentage? Percentage? It would be, uh, let me think about this. If you double your hourly sa- salary, that should be. It's like nice. an 80% pay cut. <laughs> oh, shit, dude. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so it, it is. Uh, uh, That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's. But uh, you've done that before, like just. Well, I haven't walked off. Well, the thing is, I've also. Uh, they say you get penalized for taking out retirement money. I've done that, but I also realize that I'll never retire. So, <laughs> just <laughs> money. I'm leaving money on the table. <laughs> I see. That's crazy. Uh, let's just say I'm very bad with money. Always have been. Always will be. Yeah. And, uh, but there was a great time where I wasn't working at all early on in the year. It mm-hmm. was my most prolific time of doing absolutely nothing. Well, yeah. But what does that look like? Go to the library every day. Go to the cafe. Get up early. Write. Read the Bible. <laughs> Dude, that's living the dream. It was. You go to the library just to read books there? No, I go to the library to write. That's, but, uh, that's free? Huh? That's free? That is free. But uh, but then you don't, you're not, there's a certain time where you have to worry about money, and that's when it feels the best. Yeah. How long but then you- when you start having no money, and then you're at the library, you're like, I should find a job. That's true. How long were you doing that for, like, with no job? Um, maybe three months. Wow. Do you think that was your dream life? 
not working for sure. I but like what I, else, what you were doing with your time? Is, were you living the dream? Well, yeah, yeah. You're you're just uh, uh, alone with your own thoughts, right? Just trying to sort them out. Yeah, you're you're reading whatever interests you. You're looking at you're researching whatever uh, you want. <clears throat> but you didn't feel like you were wasting time, right? Like you filled it up. No, I didn't. No, no. I would I would like I would wake up early and go to the library and spend uh, hours there. Oh, nice. Multiple libraries. We got the San Francisco Maine yep. Public Library, the Hastings Library. Now San Francisco School of Law, San Francisco or something like that. Mm -hmm. I, I said the name wrong, but it's it just recently changed its name. Yeah. So you are living the life. If it wasn't for the money part. Yeah, the money part's the worst part, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, uh, you don't... Yeah. And you're still paying off your loans. Um. Well, they were mostly in abeyance because of the whole oh, uh, yeah, yeah, pandemic yeah, yeah. thing. So you're good. Yeah. Okay. Well, until, uh, wait, September. This is September. <laughs> yeah, until yeah. this month. But you yeah. have a job now. Yes. But the thing is, uh, probably the amount I'm making now would allow me to not pay off the loans currently. It would be like, oh, you make so little, you don't need to pay back the oh wow the money you owe right now. It's kind of like... Yeah, but you stop and make payments, right? If you want to get the... I don't know if you qualify for it, but you know how like you have like federal loans, they'll... Cancel it after 10 years if you make minimum payments? Yeah, it's. I think it's 20 years if it's on an income-based repayment plan. It's 10 years if it's you doing public service. So yeah. if I did... But the thing is, up until recently, that's always been a bit of a trap. I don't know if you know that, but... Um, <laughs> yeah, like you don't leave after 10 years? Well, it's like, no, it's like uh, people would then try to apply for it and they would get screwed by the loan service provider, the loan servicers or whatever. I've only heard about it once. It's because they missed the payment. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's kind of bullshit, but. <laughs> so instead you just decide not to take any of that at all. Well, I mean, but you I, didn't have I, to. You I didn't work uh -huh. for the county. You, were, you didn't work for a county. You worked for a private sector. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. the entire time as an attorney, yeah, I was always it's, private. It's too late to start now. <laughs> well, it's not. It's actually not too late. I don't think. But I think there's. You would start your ten your ten years now. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, it's not like I want to retire. You That's know, true. You just keep going until you die. That's true. I Man, I am. I am sort of jealous of you living that dream life for a short period of time. Yeah, I think uh, maybe every ten years. I, I basically forced a sabbatical. I think upon myself because I worked for seven years as an attorney uh environmental and then another year personal injury and i was like you know what this is not um i just didn't care for it yeah and then uh uh shouldn't sabbaticals be like a full year i'm not saying you should well quit everything and i'm not gonna well if you think about a sabbatical from law i've made it all the way to september so I just I've, meant that's sabbatical nine months i just meant sabbatical from all work Give me one of these, as yeah, they sure. say, when in Rome. Get that. But yeah, how do you, are you, are you going to, is there a way for you to live your dream life without working? Uh, no, you got to do something apparently. That's the shitty part about life. So uh, I'm working at the hardware store. <laughs> Jesus. First time? Close enough. Close enough to the first time in a week. Yeah, man. I I would I, I thought about what my dream life would be. I would the only thing is I need to be rich. <laughs> Cause I need I need to live in like a nice place. I want to be able to have a a podcast studio and a gym. Wow, that's quite a dream. You sound like a... I don't know. <laughs> I don't fucking know. <laughs> Is it quite the dream? I feel like a lot of people could obtain it. To, to have I a am. podcast studio and a gym? That just means like a room, like an extra <laughs> room I could have. But I just want it to be like in a quiet place where like I won't bother the neighbors and like the neighbors won't bother me. But it's a, 
it's hard to do in California. Like I would have to get a house basically and there's no way I could do that. But what I'm saying is if I get two million cash, dude, I'd be or if I'm rich enough I could just uh rent a nice place and rent like a studio spot. Well, you only need money so that you can devote your time to create something achingly beautiful. That's all you got to do. Just one beautiful thing. And that's all you need to do. I mean, that's how... Uh, that's what dreamers think. I mean, I could. I feel like I could technically do that right now. Like, I could just rent out a studio spot to do podcasts, but... It wouldn't be uh, economically smart. That's what's setting me back. That's what's holding me back, John. You're good with money. That's the problem. I know, but then it's like... Um, you got to be bad with money. How, how I would describe this is like... Um, Jesus. Like a... Uh, There's no fucking ridges. Like someone making, let's say, an, uh, let's say like $40,000 a year and someone that makes $100,000 a year. Yeah. I feel like your life, your lifestyle is basically the same, except for one guy is working towards buying a house. You know what I mean? So I feel like I am, I am trapped by the dream or of whatever to owning property. That like I'm just forever <laughs> saved. having this pile of cash is forever growing, but my life is exactly the same as. I have been renting a studio for 11 years that I'm pretty sure I will die in. And they they, right. will, they will find my body in someday. Yeah. How much are you paying for it? If you don't mind. Uh, 10 50 no. Tenderloin. Were you saving a shit ton of cash when you were working as an attorney? Fuck no. You were drinking you still that got, much? No, you still got loans and stuff to pay back. I was still paying that. Your boy got no loans. Well, that's good on you. I have insane amount of loans. But yeah, so that that's where I'm stuck at. Should I stay on the path of hoping maybe I could one day buy a house and then do all these things? What are you going to do in a house? Have a nice room for a gym and a podcast studio? Raise a family. Who wants to raise a family with you? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you would have a beautiful family. As unconventional as it might be. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I don't know. Maybe I should just rent out. You know what? Renting out like a you're spilled all over your I shirt. I know I fucking did. I got this fucking cigarette in one hand. And, and you There's drank. no ridges on the goddamn ashtray. I know. He gave us the worst one. We should just use the floor. No, I'm just kidding. Well, no, I can't hold yeah. it on there. That's the problem. I know. Just put it on the. Just put it on your notebook. <laughs> the back of your notebook. So what should I do? What do you think? I need a, a, advice from a wiser gentleman. Uh, I told you I'm bad with buddy. I, know, I would. I always say, but this is not about money. This follow is like, your dreams now. That's all you got to do. Yeah, and you make it work. Yeah, you. you uh, Cause let me tell you what I well, squeeze out. What, what I want to do. I would. If, and I think I could do it now. Is just that I would never. I would not have any more savings. But I would do a podcast weekly, more consistent, and I would hire like a, a producer so I don't. Like someone to like bounce off ideas with, you know what I mean? Well, you know, I'm on the market for a new job, so I will gladly be your producer. Yeah, but I live in L.A. I will move into your new home that you're going to buy. I can't. I don't, I don't have money to buy the home is what I'm saying. How much money do you have saved up? Don't tell them. Don't tell them. A lot. Oh, my God. You were living at home for a good while while you are up here, for right? A, for a year. Yeah. Were you saving hard? Yeah, I mean, just by default, I don't spend a lot of money. If you could tell by my outfit, you know what I'm saying? These are the, shoes, those are impressive shoes, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, but like, I don't buy as many shoes as you think I would. Like these, these shoes, I think were 130 bucks. I'm wearing sixty dollar steel toed Skechers. <laughs> those look good. They're functional. They are very functional. They're very, uh, very steel toed. Does that mean it's just not flexible? Uh, well, there's um. It protects you from like when you're carrying Kick. heavy things, right? You know, not when you're trying no, to hurt people. I, I thought it's only when. Wait, where's the to is the top part steel too? I actually, yeah. So a steel-toed steel shoe is like a cap. Yeah. Yeah, I think it protects you from dropping stuff. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And so I carry some heavy stuff here and there. But it looks like it's a pretty hardy 
boot like structure. Where well, that's could, yeah. I mean, that's a fun thing. Kind of, you kind of, you, you don't work a lot with your hands. Yeah. At the store. Yeah. But you do a bit. So we're back. Where uh, where were we uh, talking about? How rich I am? Yeah, I believe so. And well, the- and your dream to own property so that you can have nice rooms in which that will have different functions. This is so. This is the issue I was talking about. Like, I have all this money, but I can't buy a house with it. You know what I'm saying? When do you think you'd be able to buy a house? If if the market crashes right now, um, and like a nice house, and probably not even in the areas I would want to buy. I think like a decent area near like the areas I want to. At I, least near the comedy store. I think you would do well in Iowa. Yeah, but I want a part of it is I want to do comedy, even though that's like that's like a pipe dream. <laughs> Everything's a goddamn pipe dream. But I think if uh, if if Forgive prices me, Lord. prices drop enough, and that's going to be a disaster for everybody. Like I'm talking about, like hardcore recession, two thousand eight, two thousand nine. You need you need like um, people to get suicidal. Yeah. When, when, when their when their portfolios crash. Yeah, yeah. I'll okay. need to, I'll need that to happen, and then when that happens, I would have to sell. But my portfolio would be probably down too, so I would have to like sell everything in my portfolio. Oh, Jesus. And I may be able to. I'm envious of you. You have a portfolio. I have no portfolio. Yeah, but it doesn't mean anything if I'm not using it. It's just, it's literally like a number on a screen. You know what I mean? Like I'm captured by the idea of like. It growing. Just or, watching it grow. Yeah, or the American dream. It's like the house right now. And I don't know if you're following it because I'm a finance guy. <laughs> I know, yeah. Dorian's a big finance guy. Interest folks. rates are so high right now, so even when it drops, I would have to basically buy it in cash. So like, a lot of things have to happen exactly. So many things have to go wrong for a lot of people for you to be able to flip to get property is what you're telling me. Yep. Yep. You let the cigarette go out. It was at the end already. Mm. But that's mm. what I, I got to do. And um, yeah, I know. Or I could just right now rent out because I don't, I don't like, I'm, I'm going through like, I'm in a war with my neighbors, dude. Let me tell you this. This is like Aesop's fable. Like you're the ant. I'm the grasshopper. I'm the one who dies in the cold, by the way. Do you live? That's not Aesop's fable, dude. That's a bug's life. <laughs> this, is uh, that the same story? Have you seen a bug's life? I have seen a bug's life, but uh, more of a fable guy. <laughs> oh, okay, but it's the same a story. Yeah, <laughs> is it the same story? Uh, is that what happens in a bug's life? Is it like where? Uh, what does the bug do? Who the bug that the, the bug's bug. life is the the ants are getting like harassed by the grasshoppers and then they fight back. Is that true? Is it a true story? No, it's not in history. No, because why? Because they were so they were they they were going to die in the winter because they collect all these food and the grasshoppers were just yeah taking that's them. yeah that's the fable yeah that it, well it's they don't go to war in the fable it's like the grasshopper is more carefree and not very warring uh, okay. they're not a warring tribe yeah, in the yeah, fable yeah. but in the better better version of it Disney's <laughs> a Bugs Life I don't even know if it's Disney Pixar. yeah it's probably DreamWorks or something yeah. But yeah, so I'm caught. I mean, I'm stuck in between. I think so. I could. Oh, what else? Oh yeah, I, I don't feel comfortable doing the podcast on my place because I'm going through a war with my neighbors. I feel like I've been at a constant war yeah. since I've been 30. Do you want to pick that up or no? I'll leave it. It's just yeah. a phone or something. Dude, since I turned 30, every single fucking neighbor I've had are like super loud, and I'm talking about like blasting music loud. Have you have you ever gone to your neighbor and knocked on the door? Yes. And what do All they do? I've, I've turned into a Karen because of these guys. It's not. No, I, I've done it too. But my neighbor, they they they, they came around to it because I was just like, hey, they it's this time. They do it and then they, they just keep doing it. They revert back to their, yeah, their yeah, bad yeah, behavior. Yeah. yeah. So it started, it started when I bought my first property that I don't have anymore. You hear that, folks? He already had a property, then sold it already. <laughs> wow. One of his many assets in his portfolio. I don't have any properties anymore. So I bought this and immediately I bought a con, like a shitty condo in this complex. And the people upstairs were just degenerates. They would just let, let like their apartment flood for no reason. 
And then like water would drop out of my ceiling. And then the lady up downstairs was just blasting their bass and my bed would shake. And then there were a couple, and then one time, I don't know if I told the story before on the podcast. So like one time I had to go downstairs and I knocked on her thing and her kid opened the door and I felt so bad for that kid. It was like a was little he filthy kid. or were they filthy? No, I couldn't see because it was like dark and the, it was so good. You know how like some places have like a. Kids like, are you my papa? No. <laughs> are you but you know how, how like some doors have like, they have like that, that thing that keeps the bug out. A screen, a screen door. <laughs> yeah. But where I was living, the screen door was like uh, it was metal, so you can't. See, it's just like little dots. Oh yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah. So it's yeah. metal, so you can't see anything. So the door was open, but like it was just the gate. And I think some little kid was like there eating cereal. It was like two a.m. And then he, I was like, "Can you go get your mom?" I was like furious. And then um, he got his mom, and I told her to turn it down. And then like she's like, well, "How did you? How did you phrase it?" I said, "Can you turn it down?" Like that, but I, I probably might have. I was ready to like murder somebody. Did you have a knife in your back pocket? No, that's how I approach all yeah, my one, neighbors. One one night, always have your knife ready. She was so loud, I didn't know it was her. At first, I thought it was the people upstairs, and I went upstairs. This is the same night, I think. I went upstairs, and I was ready for like some because these guys, like I told you, they're degenerates. They're like blending with the water flood. I was ready for them, some guy to come out and be like, no. And I would just throw him off the balcony. <laughs> like, I was like, in my head, I was just like. You were ready to murder. <sighs> Allegedly. <laughs> I, well, I was I, in that mind. I was, I was so heated. I'd rather fight. Legally, I think you're fine. I know, but I'm just saying. I know, but like, you know. Um, not you, like, should, you shouldn't trust an attorney, by the way, who works at the hardware store. That's true. <laughs> yeah. No, I ra- I rather fight to the death than have to call the police. And I've called the after that time. I told that lady to be oh let me finish the story. So I told that lady to like be quiet. And she's yeah. like okay, sorry. As I was leaving, I told I heard the kid say that the mom. She, she was like, I told you. Oh, uh, the crushed kid crushed me, dude. To know that you have a shit mom. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. So that was the place. What were they listening to? Drum and bass. It's pro- I can't. Even, the thing about like they don't I don't I think they understand this like walls typical walls like you don't hear people talk really unless they're screaming yeah so all I hear is the bass just like boom 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 okay okay got you yeah so it could yeah. be anything it could be like hip hop it could be like whatever with the bass line yeah something with some good uh, yeah. sick bass going yeah. off yeah so then I, I called the cops one time I I told I finally convinced the board to uh, to uh, find. I guess they don't even find her because she's a tenant. So they find the owner. Oh, the board being the homeowners, like yeah. basically a homeowners association. Yeah, they right? suck, dude. The HOA sucks. I'm just telling you guys all this privileged life of how it sucks to be a homeowner. <laughs> but no, no, you, it sucks. So they finally find her and she was quiet, but like the people upstairs, shit, the whole building's like probably violating something. And I was like, I was. What neighborhood was this? This is in LA, Long Beach. So okay, you wouldn't understand. This okay. was in Cambodia town, so it was like working class. But you know, it just happens like who the neighbors are. Like the neighbors next to me are fine. You know, it just happens I was stuck in between. So I sold that and went back home to San Francisco. And these people have been my neighbors for like twenty years since I was a kid. We were fine. And then when I right when I moved home, they like had a tenant. Oh. Uh, and she was blasting music. And that shit was driving. And that fucked your parents up too, then, right? Dude, my parents are pussies, dude. <laughs> yeah. What's going on, man? You can't see me clearly. My, <laughs> yeah, my parents are uh, are pussies. They, I was, I was gonna, I went, I was gonna go over there and confront yeah. them, and my my dad was like, "No, don't do it." And I was like, I was like, you know, they're like, they're gonna be here longer. Well, they've probably seen them already be in their worst selves. No, this is just a, she's just like a single mom, <laughs> like Latina lady. She doesn't, yeah. she's not like a gangster. She's just a bitch, you know what I mean? Like, a, so she was just playing and I was like. But did you ever talk to her? Yeah, she wouldn't open the door because she lives in the basement of the neighbors. Oh, so I okay. would knock out, ring the doorbell and they wouldn't. So I wrote a letter and I put it on my, my neighbor's thing. He came over and confronted me, this guy. And he was just like, this is not nice. Like the, the way I wrote my letter. And I was like, motherfucker, like this is me being nice. Me writing you the, the fucking note to tell your tenant to shut up. And then like, I, I guess like another day they were playing again and I came over and then he was just like, just call the cops. So I called the cops. But then uh, 
nothing happened. I think they just like, I think they were so sick of her that she's gotten a lot better now. But this is like after I moved. Yeah. And then there was another time. Um, she was in her wilding phase. Single mother and all. This bitch was like probably in her late 30s, dude. Dude, I'm old. I'm in my mid 30s. So we're probably, we, we, she might be a little bit older than me. She might be in her 40s. Her kid was like school age, but like old enough to go take the bus by her, by herself. Maybe you're the problem in all this. Once you see Dorian walk in there, I mean, like I can play my music loud. You dude. look like, because you haven't invested any of your money in your clothing. <laughs> you look like you're ready to party. No, I'm That's not. That's the problem. But then the, there's this one time she was, and I wasn't even trying to do this. I was just trying to knock on the, the thing. Yeah. They played it like 7 a.m. to like 6 p.m. at this point. So I was fed up. I just walked over and I like hit the wall. I hit it so hard, I punched a hole in the wall. <laughs> and I haven't fixed it yet. Maybe you should fix it for me. And Is it drywall? Yeah. Yeah, we can do that. I can help you out. Do you, you just started like two months ago. You know how to do this? I fucking, uh, first of all, folks, let me tell you something. <laughs> I'm a quick learner. Don't let Dorian. Uh, I've seen YouTube videos how to do it too, but I was just like, yeah, whatever. No. So there's just there's just a hole in the wall downstairs. So like, at some point, we're, like, we're gonna have to fix it. Like, if my if my parents are how big is the hole? It's it's gonna be pretty big if you want to replace it because I, I hit it. It's a line, so it's just a, it, it collapsed in. It's not a full hole; it collapsed in, but there's a line like down. In drywall, it, uh, we can fix this. Well, yeah, we but, can fix it. But yeah, so anyway, that's it. And then now I live in West Hollywood, the nicest place ever. In the beginning, I was like, "Dude, it's so quiet here, so nice." And dude, the neighbors came in. New neighbors. One month in, dude, he came in, started blasting his fucking music, and I knocked a couple of times. And then I finally told the uh, the property manager for that place, and he's been a little bit better. But he like he's like reluctantly getting better. You know what I mean? Like You're be- making the property manager rise to the occasion or the tenant rise to the occasion? Who's yeah. right? Who's getting better? The tenant. Tenant, okay. But he doesn't he doesn't lay like reluctantly because this guy's blasting music, blasting his TV. It's so annoying. Like every day he would just watch ESPN from like the moment he wakes up and he blasted out into the but then the the hallway kind of echoes, so you could you could hear everything very clearly. Why do you attract such I know such horrible YouTube? people? Did I did I live like terrible life in my twenties that God's punishing me in my thirties? <laughs> I think it's a past life thing. <laughs> Why do you have to wait until I'm thirty, dude? Like when, <laughs> when I this is the problem. Like I want my, you to know the suffering you would have to go through. No, but in my thirties is the probably like the worst time to do this to me because at this point I'm like more likely to be a Karen. And I'm more likely to pull the I haven't pulled this card yet, but I'm like Well, I, I think you're being disparaging toward uh, Karen's. But I'm like, you know, I mean, but like at this point in my life, I could just hit up the the property manager. But like, dude, I paid eighteen fifty here, dude. Deal with it. <laughs> Whereas before, like, like same thing with the HOA. I'd be like, I pay you guys four hundred dollars a month. You well, know, with the HOA or the, you should be able to campaign and be on the board yourself. Yeah, but they we, I try not to get into stuff like that. Yeah, this might be your next evolution where I'm, you. No, be, I'm just. Uh, I'm never getting into HOA again. That's why I can't afford anything. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, so so first he would he turned off his TV, so I can't hear his TV as much anymore. But his music was still kind of loud, and I had to like complain a couple times. And now it's like, now I could still kind of hear the bass, but it's not reasonable for me to be like, yo, tell him to shut the fuck up. So, well, make sure you document dude. everything. That's my um, yeah, say. Yeah. I went over on such and such date, yeah, such yeah, and yeah. such time, such and such was happening, and this is what I did, and this is yeah. what I said. I did that, but also like just always, just I always also, keep a record. I could also just make that shit up. It's not even a real record. Well, no, the thing is, even it, the thing is, uh, you can always make up a fake record. The po- the problem is, someone might ask you about it. And so you don't yeah. want discrepancies to arise. This happens. Um, we don't need to get into how litigation works, but it's <laughs> it's all about like yeah, yeah, yeah. The, having a story. When you when you tell the truth, you remember it better than your own lies. Oh, like okay. it's easy it's easy to lie in the moment. Yeah, it's very hard. It's it's not very it's not a lot harder, but it's harder to recall a lie yeah, yeah, that you yeah. told to be consistent. It's much more. It's it's easier to be consistent with the truth than it is to be consistent with a lie. Good so always know. tell the truth, folks. I'm a big truth teller. Yeah, I mean, I tell the truth too. Uh, 
Why to, not? To my detriment sometimes. <laughs> um, <and laughs> the <laughs> truth will set you free. That's all I can do. But um, as long as you live an upstanding life. Yeah, I mean, I live an okay life. But that's so that's where I'm at. So I'm afraid. I don't want to. But you know what? Having like really terrible neighbors made made me like a better neighbor. Like now, I strictly whenever I'm in my apartment or even at my mom's place where I'm staying at right now, when I watch something, I just put on headphones. Like it's automatic now. I don't even. Well, that's a bit much. Yeah, but I think because I'm so sensitive to like these assholes that I'm just like yeah, I You're don't traumatize. Wanna... You've I am been traumatized. traumatized. I have PTSD. <laughs> I've been to war. Like, I, <laughs> like if I hear a baseline, I'm, uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to go out for some, you know, some commies. You know what I'm saying? Once I hear the baseline, it's like, oh, it's like <laughs> even even in the stuff you're already watching yourself, yeah, you you disassociate and you you hate yourself. <laughs> well, I I know what it's like for me to suffer. That I don't want to put it put it that on other people. I mean, I think that's kind of you to say. I think in some ways, yeah. Cheers to that. You don't want to. You don't want to annoy people. That, I think that is a uh, a sign of a decent person. You don't want people to go through what you did. Yeah. So that's why I kind of want my own space to have my podcast. I don't want people to hear me and my friends just be like. <laughs> and this is why you need to buy a new house. Yes, in a very nice neighborhood, no attached walls, <laughs> close to the com- comedy store. <laughs> Uh, that, uh, that sounds that sounds like a tall order, right? What I'm saying is, I need a three million dollar home to be like three hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's all I'm asking, and I know the suffering this country will have to go through for me to be able to afford that. <laughs> yes, there will be a lot yeah. of tightening of belts just so Dorian yeah. can have but his I think, peace I of think mind it's worth while it for, podcasting. For me not to bug my neighbors with my podcast. I think if the world collapses, if the world collapses, yeah. it'll, it'll, I'll be great, dude. I'll be. It's getting there. Well, I mean, I'm praying for you, Dorian. Nightly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you'll always have a job, maybe. Well, I, my job is to be your post-apocalyptic podcast producer. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Uh, we will go amongst the wreckage to I could find probably, interviewees. Uh, I could probably rip you off and have you as my producer since you're willing to take an 80% pay cut. <laughs> yeah, I'm bad at this. Yeah, I am bad at the financial aspect I was just of like, life. Dude, I'll give you like 20 bucks on like a couple of beers and you're like, hot damn. Uh, that's true. Give me some hot dogs too. Like I, dogs. I, I will eat like a roach if I have to. Yeah. But how's the how's how's stand up been in San Francisco for the past nine months? Uh, stand up things is, have changed for you. I feel like from, from I don't outsider so. looking in. I it's always just a slow progression of getting trying to get better, trying to expand time. Just like okay, you can do five minutes. Mm-hmm. Okay, can you do ten? Yeah, I can do ten. Can I do fifteen? Yeah, I could probably do twenty. And it's just slowly like getting more and more because you know I write little tiny jokes. Yeah, and they are they just you just pile them up and you hope to um, not repeat them when you're on stage. Exactly. So you got to not be inebriated on stage, which is what I don't. I don't do that. I don't like yeah, to be. Yeah. I don't like to uh, drink or well, I'll have one or two before being on stage. I mm-hmm. don't smoke before being on stage. Well, I, I smoke cigarettes. cigarettes. But. Dude, the, cigarettes cigarette, the cigarette high is way better than weed, dude. Taking that's from someone who doesn't fucking smoke cigarettes. Yeah, when I smoke cigarette, I'm just like, dude, I'm ready to party. The but when I your s- oyster, the problem is when you start talking about them, I still want to smoke one. So here we are. Yeah, how many do you smoke a day? I don't want to answer that in case my doctor, because I, I tell doctors a different thing than what actually happens, probably. What is your doctor? You're like, only when I drink <laughs> to your no, doctor. I, I tell a doctor, mm, two to five. Okay. Well, back when I could go to a doctor. <laughs> True that. But yeah, dude. You no, know, I mean, from the outside looking in, it seems like you're making connections with people. Maybe that was the thing I was holding you back when I was still here. Well, it's always a slow roll. The thing is, uh, I first here's how it works. I first meet people. Uh, they're put off by me, and then slowly I erode, erode them away with my uh, 
manner of who being. Did you, who do you put off? No one. Everyone. Everyone. Oh, the only time I... You you were in an awkward situation. What, what story is this? I think we talked about this last time when that guy asked you for a cigarette. Oh, and yeah. And then you just basically said, like... I don't remember what you said, but interpretation was kind of like, you could go now. Oh, that's... Yeah. Maybe I sh- maybe I was harsh there. We'd have to go back to the tape to see what, yeah. how I felt about that at the time. But yeah. I, even now, you remember it. Slightly. No, I feel like I I remember it as not being. I don't think you were trying to do it, but it came off that way, which made it funny. Yeah, well, you know, sometimes people can rub me the wrong way. Uh, I try not to let it happen. Yeah, I met a guy once who said my name like three times in quick succession. I was like, this is, he's trying to do some kind of like your full name book trick. Like, like he learned in a book on how to make friends, like, like engage people personally by <laughs> saying their names in like quickly and in like multiple amount of times, uh, so that you endear yourself to them. Was and he it, saying your name, your full name, like John beer, John beer, no, John, no, beer. No. John, 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 John. Like yeah. That. It was more like, Oh, nice to meet you, John. Oh, that's cool, John. Uh, like, I don't don't keep saying my name. I don't. Like you know that. what it is? He might. It might be his own trick to remember your name. That's actually a good point too. It's so I kind of now I feel upset. That's right, dude. Nice guy over here. What's me. a good door? It has upset me. <laughs> but I've seen you gone on punchline a couple times. Yeah, it's true. You're doing all those other shows with the the other independent groups out here. Uh, when I when they'll have me, I need to be better about putting myself out Reaching there. Reaching out, yeah, and asking for a spot. But the thing is, I I I uh, I like just uh, there's something about you know trying to if I want to write short jokes. Open mics are actually, I think, really good for those. Uh, they're great places to test them out, if, especially if they're really new. Yeah. Um, and then tr- slowly begin to try to build. Well, there, there's kind of like two. There's two things that I'm working with. One is, uh, and I, my metaphors always change, but there's like a skeleton set that'll get me from they'll give me 10 minutes mm-hmm. and there's a tighter version of it. That's seven minutes and an even tighter version of it. So it's five minutes. And what I want to do is now there's like little pathways mm-hmm. off of certain jokes. Where I was like, Oh, you like this kind of joke? Here's some more like it. Right. Here's some more like it. So it's almost like a, a nervous system on my skeleton to continue my body metaphor. And you're hoping to be able to just pull them out of your head. Out yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. And even not, and so the, and so I have a lot of jokes that I don't mind telling that I enjoy telling, mm-hmm. but I don't like how, when I get to higher amounts of time, mm-hmm. the, the structure becomes more rigid because I got to make sure I don't repeat. Yeah. And so I have to one build up to more time by making a very rigid structure because that's how like if i'm gonna if i'm gonna go the furthest with what i got then i have to be very um linear Mm -hmm. if i want to be more in the moment i need to be less linear right and so i got to uh work on the branches but it's hard to keep practicing everything shows would allow me to do that more probably there's going to be more times to fail. But then that being said, it's okay to fail. Well, Samuel Beckett, you know, ever tried, ever failed. Blah, Have blah, you thought blah. about putting clips up, like all these young comics? Uh, I got to get a good film. I think I have some good uh, film I can use. I need to... Um, do you film it yourself or do those shows? No, from... it's it, the film comes to me either through uh, someone... F- it's never through me. I don't have a camera that I bring around. I don't prop up my phone. Yeah. I do here and there. I audio record myself, but mm-hmm. I don't listen to it. And I know people say that you should. I, I'm kind of, I'm very much incremental in terms of how I do things. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah. always, it's always, I'm always a slow roll. Once you get a uh, 30 minutes, maybe you could shoot a special. Is that what you want? I'm not. How much time are you comfortably doing? 
how much time would could, would you do you think you could comfortably do? I haven't done a long set. Like a long set as in when I used to do the belly rub show, and that's eight minutes maybe. I think the max I've done was 11. But the problem with me is like I feel like I never have more than like three to five minutes. But it's not true because my jokes have changed. But um, I forget a lot of jokes. I forget how to tell them. I forget why they work sometimes. Well, I think there's always a lag too because you, if you're going to do a show set versus – an yeah. open mic set at a show set you're gonna you might revert back to tried and true or at least i do i do it for sure and when and the show set kind of lags behind what i'm doing at mics which yeah, yeah, is yeah. a bit more loosey-goosey a bit more trying to mm-hmm. um see what other pathways are there yeah, and I think uh in LA kind of screwed me towards like the 2 minute 3 minute set. Is that how much time you're getting at mics? I mean, I want to most mics are 5 minutes, but like the important ones are sh- like improv is 3 minutes. And um comedy store whenever they do have it is like 2 minutes, 3 minutes. So it's like Okay. So I'm always, I'm always, I feel like I, I'm always like geared towards like that three minute, right? But it's crazy because I, I would be able to do my, th- my five minute set in three minutes, but sometimes it would go really well. And um, doing the five and three, yeah, five minutes and three. Well, minutes. that just means your five could be tighter. Because then, if you think about it, that just, that means your five is really a tight three or tighter three. Right, but I feel like I'm just. I'm jumping through so many topics, I think. I'm still trying oh, to figure... Yeah, I can see what you're saying. I'm, tr- I'm trying to figure... I'm trying to figure, like, a lot of it out. I think a lot of... I mean, I guess people will understand this, but, like, there a lot of, I feel like, comedians that are really funny, sometimes it's not even their jokes or their punchlines. You know what I mean? Like, uh, just the persona? Or the, the way pers- they present on stage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Their persona, their... Some of them are hard to figure out. Some things like you could you could be like, oh, you know, it's blah blah blah. But um, but yeah, I'm trying to work on like my persona, and it what it's what it does seem is like whenever I'm having fun up there, or I'm at least I'm pretending like I'm having fun, like if I'm smiling, like I tend to do better. But it just might be because I have a goofy smile and be like, this is a goofy dude. <laughs> this goofy fucker up here. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure it out. I'm trying to get better with jokes. But I'm catching myself like uh, a lot of my new stuff right now is topical. And I won't be able to use it for long, you know, like without giving away my, what my jokes are. Like the first two jokes I've been doing every time is uh, Sound of Freedom <laughs> and uh, Affirmative Action. Like I can't do those jokes much longer actually you know what i mean well sound of freedom is a much more flash in the pan than affirmative action i mean affirmative action is going to be around yeah um as a discussion or a flashpoint for a lot of people for a very long time right because it has been for a very long time right right? but my joke is about it being struck down yeah well i think there's there's going to be a work around there okay where you can um because what you do is what is now becomes the past yeah. of the joke and then what is now becomes the next point. Cause already it's losing steam. I, I first did the joke, the affirmative action joke two months ago at a uh, all out comedy. And I just said it right before, like I thought of it right before I went out and I just said it and it did really well. And it did really well a couple times at the improv. And then the last couple times I've done it, it was just like, meh. Yeah, but the thing is, I think certain, um, like, there was one joke I wrote that was um, just uh, stupid. It was, like, about, Mm -hmm. um, uh, like, being a mad scientist. Mm -hmm. And then I was able to attach it to the Oppenheimer movie, Mm -hmm. which right now... It's kind of in vogue, right? Yeah. And so I was able to use, I was able to refresh that joke with a new intro to it, new mm-hmm. setup. And that's working better than it 
did in the past. It it had worked in the past, and mm -hmm. that's what I like about the mics is like you, yeah. Any open mic is like you come in and you have I, any anything I have new, I put at the top, or I want it. I everything at least that's new gets tried at the very top, which I think is like the hardest spot for it to work. And if it works there, then it can work other places. And so it it kind of worked, but with Oppenheimer coming out it worked better with mm. it and so it's in a way it was me taking what i thought was a non-topical joke and making it topical at least for a moment and and it, when i need to i will just shear off the oppenheimer mm -hmm. reference do you um when you write your jokes do you write in joke form or you just kind of free write do you is there like a setup punchline you no, because you, you, I just write notes, and I, I write notes, and then I comb back over the notes, mm -hmm. and the notes begin to compound more notes, and what happens is eventually, mm -hmm. everything. if everything is going to plan, or not to plan, but to the way it has done in the past, is something, it's like you, you keep striking at it, nothing hits nothing hits mm -hmm. and this is not like on the stage but stage counts too but like just thinking about it yeah and then then someday a little bit of time passes and something clicks and it begins to take into a, a shape that um gets and it might start off wordy and then I start to trim the words down, and mm -hmm. then I might get down to like a um, uh, um, th maybe the shortest version of it. Like th I currently open with a, a joke that started off uh, maybe twenty words, and mm -hmm. uh, now I got it down to. Um, nine words oh nice and so th and that's what i open with do you reread your stuff every day and write every day or you just i i go through my notes most every day um sometimes sometimes i don't do it in because i get off work and gotta decompress a little yeah and then go to um mics and try it and that's what the fun thing about it is if you're going to go out to a show or a mic the night of mm -hmm. and you don't have to worry about money for a little bit you can go and just really just write and just and and when i say write i don't mean just like sit down and actually write i mean that part too but also thinking about it go out have a smoke yeah give you a little bit of distance from it go back to old notes um mm -hmm. uh whole yeah it's, it's a whole fucking process yeah. that i just slowly try to tease out but the thing about it is is that as i begin to write more notes in my notebooks uh they do take on more of the form of the type of jokes that i write mm -hmm. which i think is maybe a just a whether or not it's the right progression it's a progression yeah, i don't know yeah, if it's yeah. the right progression but it's 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 a way to move forward mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm so lazy with writing. Like, I don't write a joke down until I've done it a couple times, and then I'm like, I need to write this down. You know, I, I've I met other comedians like that, and I think they've had success with that too. I, yeah. I'm a very much a words um, on paper yeah. allows me to think it because I, 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 what I'll do is if I'm really gearing up for a new set of something I want to do without looking at a set list, mm -hmm. I write it out. Totally. I each joke will have a keyword, and I'll probably write out the set a few times, mm -hmm. word for word, because the more I know it in that word for word fashion, especially nowadays, like mm -hmm. it wasn't like this at the very beginning, but as I begin to write it out, um, again it becomes like the skeleton on which you like kind of like mm -hmm. you go in and out of. Yeah, and it's and not it, because I don't want to do it. I have like a it's torturous for me to put word onto paper. Oh, I understand that. Yeah. That like makes like sense. I'm supposed to, what kind of sucks is also like when I write something down or I do a joke, like I kind of know what would be, what's funny and what would work and what wouldn't work. And the stuff that don't work will never work. 
and the stuff that I think will work kind of works immediately. So I don't know. I don't know how to develop jokes, and I don't. Well, I think that's okay because you, what you're doing is you're just doing what people do, which is you're finding out what works for you, right? Yeah. Like, and the goal is to just get better mm-hmm. at making people laugh, and that's all you want to do, right? Yeah. If you're if you're gonna go on stage and tell jokes, you want people yeah. to laugh. My dream is to like just be able to do like a longer bit, which I haven't been able to crack the code yet for that. So I don't know. What seems to work for me is like the misdirect, but I'm like, but if people see a pattern, I'm just doing like really fast, like one line jokes for five minutes and they're all misdirects. Like I think people might be able to pick up a pattern and get bored of it or, you know. Well, no, I think what happens is from that arises you just knowing that you're writing new jokes because I write short jokes Mm -hmm. and then I write, longer jokes and then i realize there's like a certain cadence you can go where did it did it did it did it did it and then you drop into a little bit of like what i call the longer jokes and for me a longer joke is like 30 45 words okay and then go and then once you start to maybe lose them or the or you just or you might be losing them or it's just the way you've realized over the time that yeah. This joke, this kind of joke or this cadence follows well after this cadence or this joke. Mm-hmm. And you can begin to piece it together. And so what happens, I think, sometimes is you start to see like a, a structure form over them. You know, like uh, these belong together. Um, but But the thing is, that's just kind of how I've been thinking about it now. And I don't think it's right or wrong is just how it's been working mm-hmm. with the goal of it being getting people to laugh right because i never say anything i don't care about being serious on stage i just i just don't care but i have to make sure that people are engaged and yeah. interested in laughing so back to my question would you <laughs> would you shoot a special if you have enough material or you don't think that's i would record an album i think that would be fun i I like not video, but just uh, audio, or I think an audio album would be fun. Okay, uh, kind of you know like um, Steve Martin. <laughs> okay, that's cool. Do you have you ever thought about like how would you would do it? How would you how would you record it? Uh, well, you know how like uh, Mitch Hedberg had like the he had an album with like the I never saw it. The bass playing in the background. Like, so he had music playing in the background. That's kind of fun. Oh, really? Well, yeah. It's like there's like a, Can you hear like the, audi- the audience too. reaction in that yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think you always... I think on albums, you want to get the audience reaction. Yeah. I would always want that. Um, That's the hardest thing to do. I feel like if you're just recording off a camera, it doesn't pick up laughter as much or well, yeah, maybe that's, or that's, maybe people are just not laughing at my jokes <laughs> but you know what i mean like you need to like have mics in the audience to get that well, yeah you gotta you gotta make sure the place is ready for it yeah if you're gonna do it right i think you gotta make sure you account for all that yeah and the thing is i don't think i'm good enough or ready enough to do it to to put that effort in i just got to get better and that's just how you just get better just sure. be, just be better than i am you know? yeah 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 i don't think i would do it I, there's a, <laughs> there are people in la i've met two people in la where they like they shot specials and they're not good why well, but i'm saying like they're yeah. i mean they're professional comedians that i don't think are good but like it's, I feel like it's kind of insane to shoot a special when you don't have an audience. <laughs> oh, like, and you and you're not good. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're really good, maybe people. Was there no one in the room? I haven't watched their. Uh, I hope they don't watch this, but like they probably don't watch this. I don't think they really know me. But like one, you don't guy, have to say names. Don't worry about it. Yeah, but they probably know. So they know me because there's this guy who did like a dry run. So well, me, you don't need to. Go into further detail if you're going to bird bridges. I don't want you to bird yeah, bridges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying, like, they filled it out, but I'm like, they're just, they're just, <laughs> it's just not like a professional comedian, if you know what I'm saying. Like, I'm not saying I'm really great, but I would never 
go and try to do an hour right now. Oh yeah, for sure. I I I, or even I would minutes. I would crash and burn if I were to yeah. try. But I'm saying it's crazy that some people are willing to do that and they're just putting out stuff out there. Yeah, maybe it maybe it's something. Maybe it I don't know. Here's the thing though, like people this is me now just kind of defending them. Like the people. Call it a special I mean maybe call it a special. Here, another one of these. Go ahead, go at it. Go ahead. Because because uh, you think about it, like maybe they think you know, I just shot a special. That material's burned on that album, or that special, and then I will then write another album. It might be a way to to kickstart themselves. They might be doing it as a way to get to their next phase. Um, granted, it's probably it's too public for my taste. Because I'd rather do it in the shadows um, and then just come out with something I think is great or like good. At least good enough to yeah. have an audience, people laughing. But then I, maybe for some people, it's it's part of their, um, they perceive it as part of their process. And it allows them to then reorient in a way that... But you can only them. make a first impression one time. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right, Dan. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, like, I don't think. Yeah, I know. E- I know. Even if I am good. I'm, so here's another, another thing I, uh, LA is different about. San Francisco, they're really funny, really funny guys. They're working comedians, but they're not known. And like, even if I was, even if I was at that level, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't put out special. I feel like I would have to have an audience and that's. Well, can't like if I draw, if I draw, if I'm a headliner and I'm drawing, then I'll be like, I it's know time. there's, I know there's people that at least want to see this. Okay. And I put it out and I hope it's good, but I wouldn't even put it out if I know, or if I even have like an inkling of it's sucking, like I would never do it. Like it would have to be like a perfect hour. Well, you know, yeah, you know, well maybe, maybe for some folks it's like, um, just like a freshman, I guess you want the freshman album to be your best. <laughs> you most know? people's, yeah. I hate to say it, but most even professional bands, comics, and, yeah. the first one is like the best and then the bigger, and that's because they don't, when no one knows them, like no, they don't have yes men, but like, but like, uh, I feel like I'm not gonna name names obviously, cause maybe one day I'll get to work with these guys, but hell yeah, there are professional comedians where I'm like, this sucks. But they're like five, six specials in, and they have, have like they have a following of millions of people. Where, like these guys would pay to see him, just to see him. Well, they're doing something right, I guess. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying like, if it was their first special, they would never put that shit out. Oh, okay, okay, because <laughs> it's not good. Or I mean, they're so famous at that point, they don't know if their stuff is good anymore. Because mm. people are just so happy to see them, but. But yeah, but maybe I'm just projecting on them and I'm like, I'm never going to get a special, <laughs> but, but actually, an, uh, an, uh, use that house money to film, uh, your first special. Oh my gosh, dude. Hit the map, hit, hit hard with that. Dude, like a lot I'm, of production value. I'm going to try to, I'm going to try. There's this guy that um, we're not really friends, but I'm like friendly with him. Uh, his name is John, actually. John Conroy. I don't know if you've ever heard There's of him. There's a lot of us. John Conroy, shout out. I don't think he's listening, but he's like really funny. But he like he said he headlines in like the Midwest, but he's not a known name, and he still has to kind of like kind of go through the grind. Still, you know what I mean in L.A. Yeah, but like I feel like him. I, don't, I haven't seen him do like a long set, but I'm like if he has, if he has an hour, like he might be someone that should put out a special, you know. Maybe I should be his manager and that's how I get rich. <laughs> there you go. And then I'll be your producer and that's how I get less rich. <laughs> and that's how the talent get poor because we're just sucking off his talent. Yeah, that works for me. I I will be taking your money. I take your cut to help produce the podcast. Yeah. But yeah, dude. What else is new with you, dude? You uh do any do you read any novels while you're uh, with your time off? Any interesting you read? Any anything interesting you read? Well, I was getting into the Bible. I wanted to uh, read the Gospels. 
To make but fun of it or just to understand it? I have my own peculiar reasons. Um, Let's talk about something. I was a very devout Christian for most of my life. I can tell. How? Your, your shame. <laughs> my shame? Yeah. No, I couldn't tell. Oh. You, I, I assumed you were Buddhist. <laughs> <laughs> for obvious reasons? Yeah, for ob- very obvious Because I'm bald. Or because I'm Asian. The Asian part. <laughs> Anything interests you in the in the Gospels? Uh, to yeah, really bore do. the people out there. I don't think it'll bore them, uh, folks. You got to know this about the Gospel. One of my there's some good stories in there. Uh, Jesus, the, this is the, this is from Matthew. It's one of my favorite ones. Uh, this is why I think Jesus was a bit dramatic. Yeah. He, um, uh, Jesus is talking to Peter. He says, "Peter, uh, you know Peter." It means rock. I don't know if you know that. I do. Or it's and uh, number one Christian. <laughs> he's like Peter. You're going to be the rock of my church. Yeah. And then um, Peter's like, well, that's good and all, but you know, you don't have to go off and die. Yeah. And Jesus is like, behind, get behind me, Satan. Oh yeah. Like yeah, right yeah, after yeah. he's like, fucking. Right after he's like, you're going to be my rock. And then Peter's like, hey, how about this? And Jesus is like, shut the fuck up. He's like, now he's like, it's a, it's a very funny passage because it's um, it is. I mean, uh, yeah, it is funny. It is it is kind of funny when I think about it now that because uh, Peter's allegedly he's like one of us. He's a normie. Yeah, like Jesus is God. So Peter's a, the whole thing about Jesus dying is because he could forgive sins, and if he do, if he doesn't do it, even though he makes all the rules, well, yeah, Peter didn't know. Even but, though he makes all the rules, he could forgive sins other ways. Well, you have to understand also, <laughs> Jesus uh, basically uh, mocks his fucking... He doesn't mock him, mock him, but he mocks him a little bit. He mocks all of his uh, disciples or whatever with... Uh, he he says, like, uh, parables. Yeah. And people come up to him and they get healed and whatnot. And then... Uh, with all of his disciples, he's always like, don't you fucking get it? Yeah. Like they're the ones who doubt the most. It's, it's Jesus uh, closest followers who doubt him the most. Uh, cause they're like, Hey, what does that mean? He's like, you don't fucking get it. He's like, let me explain it to you. And you're like, yeah, I don't know if you really explained it that well. <laughs> um, I think at some point that he says he's, ex- he explains to them behind closed doors, what the parables are, but what's kind of sad and maybe kind of dark is, I think somewhere in the Gospels he said he speaks in parables, so then some people don't understand it. That's exactly what it is. It's like he uh, he says, uh, and you have to think about it in terms of where. How's it work? Um, Mark is the earliest gospel, right? Um, I think followed by, uh, and the closest related to it are Matthew and Luke. John is its own beast. Um, yeah, they say. I think. I think they the, say. The, the rest of the New Testament is like fucking letters from, from the Paul. Christian Church to the persecuted the, groups. The homie Paul. So what? What do you? Uh, what were you interested about the gospel? And you trying to you know, become a Christian? Again? I want to. I want to make clips about it. I, uh, you but I have to go back. I don't want to. I I do want to make jokes about it, but I also want to make. Uh, I want to do shortened versions of Bible stories. And what you're making? Jo- you said you're not making jokes. Though. Well, no, I would be making jokes. Oh, okay, but I would not. I would also, but I would be doing it tastefully. I see. The <laughs> this is my way to combat um, fundamentalist. Uh, your your dad wasn't a pastor, right? I feel like. No, he was, he was a deacon at church, but that okay. ain't, that doesn't mean shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. But yeah, it's very interesting. I I, uh, I like it. I like the Bible. And it's kind of... We got to get a good translation. But I mean, is any... Uh, it's all translated from... Greek. Or the New Testament uh, comes Aramaic. from Greek, yeah. Well, I think... Um, Aramaic, Old Testament. The people sm- sm- spoke in Aramaic. Yeah, I think so, I the know. first, 
Well, I don't know. Should I be smoking it down this much or should I? You can put it out now. Okay. Don't want to get cancer. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to get cancer. Not from the filter. So what else have you been reading? Just that? Just the, um, you get oh, through the Gospels pretty oh, quick. Um, no, but I. the thing is, the the what I'm reading is highly annotated. And I love the annotations. And it's like cross-reference mm-hmm. this verse over here in which this statement isn't said. Because, right. you know, like, because Mark is like almost the source, it is one of the main sources of like Matthew. And so it's like, okay, you're reading Matthew. It says, check out this verse that is the same story, but it doesn't mention this in this one. Mm-hmm. To see how like in this one, Matthew, in Matthew's gospel, uh, hits hard against the Pharisees versus, mm. and it's all about like what's ha- and it's like talking about what might be happening in what that time. What about Luke? All I know is he's a physician. Haven't gotten there. Uh, I'm in Mark. Mark is like uh, Mark hits hard, dude. My favorite Bible verses on there. What is it? Can you quote? Yeah, I don't know where it's from. I think it's Mark nine, chapter. Either I think it's in chapter nine. I wish I had my Bible on me. We could have had a little Bible study here. I used to have the Bible app in my phone, but the, so the story of it was some guy approached Jesus and said, please help his son. Who's, I think his son was like possessed by a demon. It happens. Yeah. And then Jesus was like, you have to believe. And then what he says was like, which is based on my whole theology as a child or as a young adult, the guy responds, he says, I do believe. Help my unbelief. Wow. I don't even think that's in Mark. You have to it's, pull it up. It's pull 100% it up. in Mark. Pull it up. Get the Bible out. And what out. hits me for that, it's like, um, you know, I think the Americanized version of uh, Christianity is all about like, you know, right? You know, like the, you kind of know the lingo. You grew up in Christianity. Yeah. You know, the whole thing about you have to like accept Jesus into your heart Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. That's the Baptist. Were you Baptist? Uh, Again, when I was young. Well, I mean, were you you raised Baptist or Catholic or anything like that? Baptist was Christian. But but like. Did we get into this last time? Catholics are Christian. They're all Christian. You have Catholics and then you have the Protestant branches. I understand that, but you can't say Catholics are not Christian. Well, are, are Mormons Christian? Um, I guess so. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, okay. there's always been like, there's always been like weird offshoots. Yeah. But they're all, the, um, well, Catholics are probably the closest thing. Mark chapter nine, verse 24. Read it. Well, it just starts where it's, <laughs> I think in the Bible app. I don't have it. Uh, is it pay for it? No, there's, there's behind the free. paywall. The Bible's behind the paywall Bible on your phone. I got this dog. How did you know what verse it was right away? If you, it's my favorite, it was my favorite verse. How did you just remember it? Did it just come to you? Was it like saved in your phone? Was it your home? No, screen? it's my favorite verse for a long time. Let's and hear I, it. And I remember where I read it. Okay. All right, guys, Bible study time. <laughs> we can talk about the hardware store after this. Okay, the story starts with in uh, Mark chapter nine, verse fourteen. I'm gonna read the whole story. Is that okay? Just read the most pertinent part. Most pertinent part. Okay. Nothing more. Okay. Ba ba ba. Okay, he says. He's telling Jesus about his son being possessed by a demon. He's like, Yeah, I don't think how that. I don't think it's how it fucking reads. Go on. He says. But if this is the man talking to Jesus, he says, but if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. And Jesus replied, if you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. What translation is that? Jesus. Immediately Sorry. he exclaimed, this sounds like some fucking NIV coloring book. <laughs> NIV version. Coloring book Bible. The right most there. popular version, NIV. 
whatever. All right, fine. But that's, I mean, this, it really, uh, and that's when I start turning like more, uh, where they, they, they call it the reformed theology, but it's not like what you think. It's reformed as in it's more like a predestination. That's just what they call it. Calvinist? Calvinist. I don't know. I mean, that's, I mean, I feel like when I read it, it's kind of like that. It's like even your faith is given to God, so none of it's really yours, which is. Oh, I see. I can, I can. Could destroy your faith if you realize you're powerless and. Well, then you have to think you're one of the chosen, and that leads to elitism, right? That's kind of an elitist thought. Yeah, I mean, or it takes away uh, the pressure of feeling you need to, if someone, like someone's salvation is based on you spreading the word. You're saying... Like it's not... It frees you from proselytizing? <laughs> no, I think... If I was still a Christian, I think you would still do it, but it's not in your hands. Oh, yeah, much. for sure. It was never in your I thought that, yeah, I could see. I see but what like you a mean. Lot of, yeah. You know how people are like real too earnest that their friends get annoyed because they're like, oh, you have to go to church. You have to believe in God or you're going to go to hell kind of deal. Yeah, it becomes their own burden. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. They make a burden out of you. Yeah. I can see that. But yeah. I don't see it as an elitist way. I feel like the your your ability to accept Jesus in your heart is more elitist because you're like, dude, this is this is like my thing. It's like more individualistic where I feel like it's less. I don't know. I don't know either. Who can say? But anyway, I, that's uh, like, I like a good Bible story. After though. reading that, like, and I guess reading it from that that uh, perspective, like I feel like a Bible. A lot of it is about predestination and well i can see where you're coming from because you know they they use that parable of the seeds being scattered and you're like mm -hmm. who the fuck scattered the seeds because some of the seeds land upon you know bad earth yeah some yeah, of the seeds yeah. get eaten and you're like oh that's what and it means if this is what happened like well who the fuck threw the seeds yeah <laughs> who's throwing the seeds on the goddamn sidewalk <laughs> yeah these rich people dude they're like i'm not gonna plant them individually uh, that's why I, that's why i turned to prosperity gospel they're the worst. I hated them. I think uh, if if you're doing well, I mean, God loves you. I think that's the most beautiful message that exists out there. Yeah, but you're taking advantage of the poor people. Well, they want it's it. like a pyramid scheme of faith. <laughs> yes, it really is. Who's yeah. that? Who's that really famous guy? Um, um, Joel Osteen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's not the original prosperity gospel. No, but he's. I mean, he it, did it well. Like that means God favored him the most. If I he, mean, I would say MLK did it pretty well, but he, there did, was good that come out of it. Did he get rich? He didn't. Well, then that's not very prosperity gospel, but that's, is it? That's what he was uh, preaching. But I, I mean, it helped move the civil rights Wait, thing. Wait, you're telling me that Martin Luther King was preaching prosperity gospel? In what way? I need to go back into this. But I think he was trying to... I need to look. I'm... Don't want to talk on my ass, but I <laughs> researched this in the past, but you caught me. But I think a lot of what he was preaching wasn't like, um, it was related to the civil rights. So it's like equal rights, freedom, all that stuff. But I feel like the gospel is pretty much like repent and you have sinned. So I mean, what he did was good, but I'm like, he was like a pastor that was talking about more like a... You're telling me Martin Luther King was just a SJW. Political. I mean, they didn't have rights back then. I don't think... I wouldn't put him in the same spot. I think that guy well, is you're a, a hero. Well, you're a prosperity gospel guy. Uh, he was using the gospel in a way to like move forward like his political beliefs, which is fine. Mm. I mean, I feel obvious civil rights, I feel like it's a good... But I'm just saying like if you were like a like a, like a fundamentalist... You know what I mean? Maybe. But I mean, everybody kind of uses the gospel that way, right? Like you're, you're, you're trying yeah. to go after like... Well, it's easy to because you can, you can pick certain parts and you can you can spin a whole yeah, yeah, whole yeah. thing out of it. Yeah. And, uh, but, but I... Yeah. But it's... Uh, I mean, did, all did those, we get, it all doesn't get matter now. Did we get into this last time? Did we get into the Bible shit last time? Are we... Maybe a little bit of it. 
Okay. You know the good. The well, you know, at least last topics. time you didn't go into your favorite Mark verse, so we're learning a lot about Dorian. Maybe I did, and you were like, "Gay." No, I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> but that's my favorite verse. Uh, I still. Once you get us to a point where we can pause this, so I can get another drink. We can pause it right now, and we're back for the third time, dude. We're having such a great time. I always do with Dorian. We always have a we always have a good. Uh, Calm chat that people f- we we didn't talk about vampires this time so we I'm can you know what, what is the what made you uh, leave the vampire life uh life got too busy to pretend to be a vampire in San Francisco how old were you uh first year of law school. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you stopped. Well, no, I stopped before then, but just because it was hard to get to. But we don't know about the vampires right now. We <laughs> Why don't not? Uh, were you no doing stand up when you were a vampire? Uh, no, because I was in Florida, and Florida, I just started to learn about stand up, and that was the last peak moment of me pretending to be a vampire. Yeah. Do you, do you just like the uh, tr- tr- what are they called the? Tremere, Tremere vampires. Like you're only interested in that lore, or you're like interested. No, I like. I don't like. I like the world of darkness lore of va- of of vampires, werewolves, mages, wraiths, the whole shebang. Okay, not Am I just forgetting one. Just not the zombies, maybe, or they don't count. Zombies don't count. Why? Because they're more post-apocalyptic zombies are more of a creation of necromancy which is a vampiric discipline of clan (laughs) giovanni in vampire the masquerade (laughs) jesus (laughs) (laughs) and maybe and and also uh death sphere mages probably in um mage what uh do you play video games yeah i do baldur's gate 3 i know dude unless blade came out shit (laughs) Yeah, this is a uh, this is my buck knife, folks. Dude, I didn't, I didn't even know you carried that all the time, or only when you I have a knife. Your house. Yeah. Oh no, I I often have it. I also have a utility knife for box cutting. Is that for protection, though? Uh, I guess it is. Although I've never used it, I like it. Kind of gives me peace of mind. But this so, is not a switchblade. You can't even flick it out no. quick, could you? You're like. <laughs> but I've also used it uh, for utility purposes. Right. Yeah. But why would you bring it in public? That's what I'm saying. Well, it fell out of my pocket. Yeah. I. And then I, you mentioned it, so I brought it on the yeah, camera. Yeah, but, but I'm just saying, you're using it as like a way of... I guess you never you know use when you need a fucking knife. You'd use this. It would be better than a punch. You would just slam. Well, yeah, you could you could use it as like a kind of a... To pack your punch, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm not going to hit anyone. I'll break my head. <laughs> I'll crumble. In case of emergency. I'll crumble, yeah. Yeah. In case of emergency, I'll break. But you my feel own safe. It's hand. like a security blanket. Like you'll never yeah, use a little it. Bit, but yeah, you'll just be like, yeah. <laughs> don't come in closer. Well, yeah, I know, and I've known people who got mugged, and they said they had something, and they realized in the moment that it didn't do anything. But yeah. yet, and so I'll still carry it though. Yeah, brass knuckles. Well, maybe those maybe are sometime maybe someone was going in a car wreck, and someone needs to cut their fucking seatbelt, <laughs> and here I have <laughs> or, a tool that does it. Or you have to, someone get in a car accident and their legs are crushed under the car and you have to cut their leg off. Yeah, I would do that too. I would get get out my hacksaw. Should we turn off that fan? I just yeah, go get that fan. Where is it? That? I'll get it. I'll get it. You get it. I'm going to have to cut all this probably... What um what makes a good vampire story? What are the elements that needs to make a successful vampire story? All right. Uh the tragedy of becoming an unfeeling monster, the uh tragedy of growing old and losing everything that you cared about. Uh having power that means nothing after such a passage of time. Mm-hmm. Uh Let's see what else. Um, they don't really ever go through the lore of the original vampire, do they? 
What are you talking about? Like, how did Dracula become a vampire? Dracula was cursed by God. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> but that's only in, that's not in the Bram Stoker world, I don't think. No, I don't think so. In Castlevania. <laughs> yeah, how'd it happen there? The anime. I think he was a scientist. And he, f- he did it to himself? Fucked something up. Like, he, he did some, like, dark arts. Well, I'll tell you this. Uh, in Vampire the Masquerade, this is... Uh, Sadly, I know much more about this in the Gospels. Uh, uh, when Cain murdered Abel, the first, what God did was he cursed him to be a vampire. And so Cain is the <laughs> progenitor of all modern-day vampires. This is not a joke, but some people believe Cain are the mu- became the Muslims. <laughs> have you heard about that? When no, you I didn't. Younger? I have never heard of that. <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, they were, someone was trying to explain it to me. I was like, dude, that's so fucked that up. Is, I, I, think, I, don't think that, I don't think that's correct in any version of history. <laughs> I bet uh, you like in the, in, the, in the Muslim, uh, the Quran, it's like, they're like, nah, dude, Cain became the Christians. Well, okay, so Cain they don't became, even say that in the Bible that Cain became the Muslims. Yeah. It was just that like Cain was the first murderer and his curse that he became the first vampire. And he was cast out. But and then was, what Cain did, I believe, was sire three vampires. And those three vampires sired what would become the original 13 clans of vampires. And that those, we would call them the antediluvian vampires. They, became, they came before the flood. 13, that is Noah's 13 flood. tribes of Judah or whatever. Ooh. Is that... I think is it's 13? 13? I think it's 13 tribes. 12 tribes, 13. Maybe that's where they got the number. That This is yeah. a fictional story, folks. I want you to know that I don't believe any of this. Are you talking about the Bible or the vampires? The vampires. <laughs> <laughs> Just not to offend everybody else. Okay. What about like the whole... Um, when did that world, the Tremere vampires, like who the guy that... The, I'm glad you asked. So he created. When did he create that world? The Middle Earth of your of vampires. I don't think you know. That. You're just throwing out terms now. The world, the, the world of vampires. When did he create that? This dude. Well, it really picks up in medieval Dark Ages, <laughs> where you have uh, no the original creator. I'm not saying when it took place. Like when did he come up with the idea of it? So, oh, the actual creator of the Vampire the Masquerade. So Mark yeah, yeah. Reinhagen, I believe, is yeah. his name. When did he write that? He, I think, Vampire the Masquerade came out early 90s. Okay, so it's actually, culturally speaking, it's way different than from, uh, what was his last name, Stoker? Is it Stoker? Straight oh, very Stoker. much so. This was 1990s. <laughs> right. When did Brom write his book? Like 1890s. Okay. okay. I think. I don't know. We'd have to look that up. I might be horribly wrong. Why don't you look it up for me before I fucking go off a cliff? <sighs> No, it's so. But the Vampire the Masquerade role playing game came out in the wake of D and D. Like so, D and D has already been around for a bit, and is it had always been like the main um, role playing game. But it was mm-hmm. always kind of it always felt more tactical, I more see. combat focused f- for a lot of people. And then you had, uh, and I and I know that there were other versions that came out, not other versions of D and D, but other yeah, role playing yeah, games yeah. that came out, but. What happened was the storyteller system came out, and that was the name of the overarching rule Mm. system for vampire, mage, werewolf, and I think what would be wraith. Yeah. Or what is wraith. and Which is a ghost, right? Mm -hmm. It is. Don't even get me started on wraith. Some of the most, some of the best role-playing books you could ever read came out under the wraith line. (laughs) Now we're. This is a very was, niche topic that no one gives a shit well, about. The, no, no, I think it's interesting because when I asked you what makes a good um, vampire story, like the themes you were talking about, aren't the same as when Bram Stoker. Eighteen ninety seven, by the way. Oh, I was right. Yeah, late eighteen nineties. Yeah, yeah. Or 1890s. So back then, the whole thing about it's like uh, from the few that I read. By few, I mean I only read two, Dracula and. Carmilla, which predates it. Yes. The theme of that is all. You told me that. I didn't didn't know that already. You had told me that. So it's all about like sexual repression. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's, 
and dra- that's you haven't scholarly read- takes on it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, have you you haven't read Dracula yet, right? Or re-read I have. It? I haven't read Dracula in a long time. I read it for a Victorian lit class years ago. Right. But yeah, but maybe I wouldn't be able to gather that on my own. No, I would have, as, especially in the Carmilla book, which is the prequel. I guess mm-hmm. it's basically about lesbians. <laughs> but like, but like at that time, I think it was like obviously it's taboo and. Well, then, then you had like Anne Rice, and she wrote Interview with a Vampire, which that is a great the, movie. I haven't never read the that book. That was in the 90s, right? 80s? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. no, I haven't read it. But, I, I great will. movie, though. Um, but no, but in the world of role-playing games, it was like, here comes a game that came along where you're... Uh, and it really hit hard, I think, in like the gothic music scene and all mm-hmm. that, and like... Uh, the idea of being a powerful creature in modern nights, mm-hmm. like nowadays, as opposed to a fantasy setting, in it, but it's like a dark mirror of our world. Like it's uh, the world is just like a very cynical place, and you're a creature in it. That's a vampire. You were you have a sire mm-hmm. who made you a vampire. You were chosen. You're a member of a certain clan. Tremere mm-hmm. being one of them. Um, and there's certain like hierarchies within those clans as you vie for political power, Mm -hmm. um, in a world where you're kind of besieged by these outside forces, like a different sect of vampires Mm -hmm. that, cause you, oh my God, I'm getting too far deep. Uh, Let me ask you this. If you kill the main vampire, does everyone he or she bits like bites do they die also no okay uh in fact they become even stronger no Uh well they (laughs) it's all like you have an affinity for the person who sired you in this in this world right and that's because they're the ones who created you they're the ones who probably quote raised you as a vampire for a little bit of time at least yeah um But what happens is you don't necessarily become mentally basically addicted to following a vampire's orders Mm -hmm. until you've drank for them three times on three different nights. We call that a blood bond. That you drink their blood again? Yeah. So ordinarily you do not want vampires to bite other vampires because they might become addicted to vampiric blood. Mm. I'm oversimplifying it. But you might commit what's called diablery. Amaranth, as they used to say. <laughs> this is too deep. But <laughs> you would then, you would basically soul eat their soul. Amaranth? I think she's like a streamer. <laughs> Only fans or a streamer. I don't know which one. Now this, But I, I've seen her on Josh Potter's I I got the name. Maybe I got the podcast. name wrong. Uh, maybe she's just a fan of the thing, and she named herself. That's her like stage name, stripper name. I thought I got it the name right. Um, it is Amaranth. I think. Well, it's Diablery in Modern Nights. It it's had several names over the course of history. But what is this soul eating of a vampire? Mm-hmm. And but what you can do is you can have a vampire drink your vampiric blood, and then if they do it three different times on three different nights. They become bound to you. They become, it's a blood bond is formed. Can you trick them? Can you like a... Yeah, you can trick You people. could roofie them? Yeah, with for the sure. Blood? Mm-hmm. In the real world, that's how you get AIDS. And in fact, <laughs> that is how a lot of the Camarilla, which is one of the main sects of vampires... The Mexicans? No. It, but it does. It does. I think it happened in Spain. Yeah. Okay. The, well, it was during the Inquisition. Wait, no. Yes, it okay. was during the there Spanish no Inquisition. So there was a time in medieval times when I might as well go full bore on this. There was a time in I think medieval in medieval Europe when the Inquisition was in full force, and it's when the vampires learned that they had to not try to become the lords of human society mm-hmm. because the humans were too many. And they could overpower them. So a group of them, the Camarilla, and the seven like main clans of it, I believe, they ended up forming the Camarilla, 
or Camarilla, however you want to say it. And Camarillo. they decided that the best thing they could do was hide within human society. And so don't be like the king of the world. Be the midnight force that exerts their political influence throughout the human realm. Illuminati shit. Yes, exactly. Nice. Whereas at the same time or close to the same time, you had the birth of the Camarillas' um, rival sect, the Sabbat. And the Sabbat were vampires that thought that they should be the lords of humanity. And they have much more overt tactics where they try to um, terrorize and mm -hmm. do like, they're much more open about what they do. And are the humans aware of vampires? Uh, no. Um, oh. That's why the name of the game was Vampire the Masquerade. The Masquerade uh. being one of the tenets of the Camarilla's main laws, which was so you do not expose yourself to yeah. humans. So that's why when you were pretending to be one, you didn't have to dress up like a vampire. Yes. So did you like dress up like this or did you have to wear like... Um... That's why when I was playing as a Tremere vampire at a coffee shop, I think I talked about it last time, this guy was telling me all about how he was... Um, uh, why he was wearing, he was shirtless and wearing like leather bracers <laughs> and wearing like, and he kept talking to me about rune magic. As I told uh, you, the Tremere were the wizards of the vampires. And so I'm like, look, dude, you're playing this. Don't game ever right. tell me about your rune magic again, because one, uh, <laughs> it's not, it's against the masquerade. And two, it's an embarrassing thing for me as a teenager, <laughs> but that was that was. But I wasn't gonna let my yeah. my individual you individual were, self get in the way of the game. But I was gonna tell him to put a shirt on. It's like next time wear a shirt. Man. Were you dressed like a regular person? Were you dressed like in a dark suit? Like no, I was dressed like uh, me and my friends had high school earlier. <laughs> oh, okay, when you like a uh, obviously you're very into this world. Do you ever like? Want to write your own like novel on vampires? No, I mean I I, I would want to write stuff, but I don't want to write necessarily a vampire story. I do. You want to write a vampire story? Just from talking to you and then me reading three vampire books, I'm like, dude, maybe I should write a vampire. Book. Uh, drop a like if you want us to collab on a vampire story. Uh, <laughs> continue. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I'm just a, I can't even write my jokes down. So, but let me tell you, there's so in the vampire world. Not only are there vampires, there's werewolves, there's mages, there's wraiths. And I know a shit ton about all of them. It's like Diablo 4. Do exactly. Play? I don't even know. I never played it. Baldur's Gate 3 is what I've been playing. That's the only one game I play, dude, and you don't play it. We could have bonded over that. Sorry. Uh, I, don't, I, uh, I don't really care for Diablo. No. Oh. Same lore, I'm guessing. There's mages and no vampires yet. I bet. Me just necromancy. Same lore. I mean, they have the same stuff, like barbarians. I don't know. It's D and D. Have you read a? Salem's I was talking Lot? about World of Darkness, not D and D. But it's a branch. World of Darkness began in the modern times, and yes, there are spinoffs that go in other times. But whatever. Have you read Salem's Lot? No. What's that? It's I've uh, heard of it. Stephen King's take on vampires. So you don't you don't know any of you don't really you haven't read anything outside of the Tremere, the Masquerade. No, yes, I've read much more than the Tremere shit. Okay, I know a lot about the facts of that world. Yeah, <laughs> which is all fake facts, but still facts of that world. Yeah, you I, I, haven't out, read, actually, I haven't actually read much of the stories. Branch out of the different vampire stuff, so we could. I'd rather read poetry. I'd rather read some. You read poetry? Yeah. Is I that read, your favorite genre? What was it? There's a. Uh, I can't think of the. Uh, Bukowski. I love I love Bukowski. Uh, I like I like a lot of dead people. You read poetry more than you read, uh, let's say, novels. Or? Well, no, I'll I'll have I'll have like a little bit of a. Uh, Poetry by the bedside, and if I want to turn to it before yeah. bed, it's an easy thing to read. I'm a good reader. I know how to read. Damn, that's nice. Every time I read poetry, I'm like, this is dumb. No, you you re you read it like anything else. You read it for the the joy of reading, of taking symbols and 
piecing like have you ever read anything like um just like a page of Finnegan's way like you just no. you don't even know what that is it's like a joyful it's a joyful I, I i think of it as like a joyful experience of reading okay. where you just read um it's almost nonsense it it practically is nonsense but what it is is snippets of it they speak to you in the way that they do and you just and you don't have to go back and you don't go back and reread a sentence because you can't go back and reread a sentence and something like that you just go it's like a you press play there's no pausing you can just go you might forget what you've read before you just keep going and that so poetry is a lot like that where you don't need to get it right the first time you just you just Mm. read it do you write poetry yourself it's been a long time. I I just write jokes now. Like I do, I want to get a certain effect out of Joke people. Writing. Yeah, exactly. It's like you know. Well, I I I always was a fan of poetry. I used to write it in school, and then I realized, what are you looking at? Just, the numbers, yeah, the levels. No, no, the time and stuff. What does it say? It says 20 minutes, but it okay. doesn't feel like we've talked an additional 20 minutes. Who can say? <laughs> this is the, th- the third recording. It doesn't feel like it's been 20 minutes. Whatever. So you, a- you don't write poems. You like poems. What was the last... Well, let's ask you this. When was the, what was the last novel or book you read? Mm. Not the Bible. And would you recommend it? I started to read, what is it, uh, is it John Sh- uh, Schwartzwelder or something? Let me look it up. I'm not well read. No, he's... um. As, as I've made you guys believe. This is what I've been trying to... Uh, um, let me get this right. He is... Uh, he's a Simpsons... He was a Simpsons writer. Mm. And he was known for his old-timey... Um, is it John Shortswater? What was the title? And he writes. He writes like these, like um, uh, humorous detective stories. Mm. And so I started reading. I haven't finished it, um, but I want to read it so I can read it out loud. I don't know, people. I have a YouTube channel. You can listen to me read things. You do. Yeah, like, What's it um, I don't know, it's under my name, I guess. I don't know. This is John Beard? It's mostly where I drink like a bottle of wine and just read uh, to the computer. Do you monetize it? I haven't. Uh, but how, how are the views like? It's been a long time since I've posted to it, but this John Schwartzwalder book is uh, mm-hmm. one that I want to put up there because they're kind of short. Uh, not that many views. Mm-hmm. It's like I, I've read... Um, Letters to a Young Poet, like, I think Letters, mm-hmm. maybe four, maybe eight. I forget which one. Yeah. Uh, I have certain favorites. Have you read that? No. Letters to a Young Poet. It's actually a phenomenal series of, do you know what it is? No. So, uh, Rainer Maria Rilke is a poet, or was a poet, and he had received a letter from I think a guy who would end up going into the like Prussian military or some bullshit about being a poet. And he sends to Raina Maria Rilke, Rilke we'll say, um, a couple poems to read and to evaluate. Mm-hmm. And what it does is it begins like this 10 letter discourse um, back and forth between them where the poet to be or wants to be writes to the established poet Rilke. Mm-hmm with certain questions and it's like um a lot of letters start off with Rocco's like oh i'm sorry it's been a while since i wrote but you never <laughs> the way it's usually been presented i think they found the letters or they have the letters from the other guy but no one gives a shit it's all about so this Rilke. is a real story yeah this is a real story this ain't vampire shit. real letters yeah but they're fucking great letters and they're like yeah. uh they're very um like creative focused letters because like Rocco's like this guy sends these letters to Roka. He's like, look, man, I'm not one. Roka's like, look, man, I'm not one to comment on other people's poetry. It's not my bag. That all being said, they need some work. <laughs> but he's more like, look, what 
you have to just write not for an audience you just write to do it you write because you're compelled to do it well yeah probably uh i think they both died fucking drinking Uh, maybe not roca i think bukowski probably had more fame and money than roca at his time of death but roca made up for it in death (laughs) and um not that that's much much solace yeah and um it's a beautiful series of letters, uh, very phenomenally written by Rilke. But I read, I read one of those. I read Hal by uh, Ginsberg, not Hal. I'm sorry, Kaddish by Ginsberg. You know, Allen Ginsberg, beat poet. No, I don't know why Allen Ginsberg. Back to the YouTube, like other stuff like, I have on the YouTube channel. Sounds like someone that works at the Fed. <laughs> policy no that's alan greenspan yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay so you're, you always got money on your mind Dory, <laughs> and you're always about making that top dollar so you can buy that house someday yeah with multiple rooms no shared walls cash rules everything around me yes cream so you re- you recommend the letters to the poet definitely sh- letters to a young poet young poet how long is the book very short it's just a collection of letters yeah i was reading um, you should read letters one four and eight folks so i think those are the best how many letters, letters are there like 10 11 oh I can read maybe 14 them. i don't maybe. know maybe it, it, one eight, one four and eight i think are the, the the key letters do you know the comic uh sam talent yeah i like him a lot did you read his book yeah did you like it yeah i did i mean i liked it but i'm like i can't even imagine that life because that life to me is like the dream if you're a touring comic. Well, I think I think he wrote that book, not living that life, but having he's a, he was able to piece together like an imagination of it, and as well as his own yeah. touring life. Yeah, because I don't think because I met him once at Cheaper Than Therapy. Oh, he, really? Yeah, he was a really cool guy. Yeah, I'm not saying it wasn't good, but I'm just saying it's hard for me to connect because you. I, I feel like he wrote like uh, a regular person would read it, be like, oh, what a what a hard and terrible life. But like when I'm reading, I'm like, dude, how do you even get there? Like, well, no, I, 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 was, like, like, so, I was like, I was like, you can't, we can't mean it's so hard to become a touring comic these days. Well, I, what I really like about that book. And I think, I think it's very well written. He's got, um, like moments of the main character, like about to go on stage and you're like, Oh, you're like, Oh, the author is going to set him up to fucking eat shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no, he doesn't. He goes up there and he, and like, whether or not it's a, a, a unreliable narrator is a different thing, yeah. but it's still a guy, but it's still a guy who perceives what he does up on stage. Yeah. Exactly what he wanted to do. Despite the one good thing he is able to do in life is the one thing that he's only ever really focused on. Yeah. Because uh, he never bombs on stage. Yeah, he like he goes up and kills, which is, which is also another thing. I'm like, I can't relate to it. But there's like that, that point book. in the book I think where he goes on to like um, some weird fraternity, um, society like meeting where like the guys getting married or something, mm-hmm. and I think he just gets his steak dinner and he's like, just total like just drags himself up on stage and then once he's up there he's like. It's fucking pops to life. Yeah. Any other comic comedy books have you read that you enjoy? Born Standing Up, Steve Martin. But that's not really about like, like a fictional stand-up. account or like a story about stand up. It's just his biography, or is it? Well, a lot of it is about stand up. Oh, really? Like, yeah. It's. Um, I think it's the tail end of the book when he talks about how stand up become begins to start diving off for him. Oh, okay. But, um, uh, but it's good. Yeah. Cause it talks about him at the magic <laughs> store or whatever. I don't know. I don't know shit about Disney. <laughs> I think but that's w- where he was working. Or I think shit. I want to read a book where I can get some secrets some comedy secrets that will. Well, the cool thing about it, launch reading, my success. <laughs> well, it's not really comedy secrets. It's more about him. Yeah. I mean, there well, no, no actually, yeah. there is something funny about it. Like he talks about why um, his stage shows became so popular, or like why why he became so popular to see live is because he hit at the right moment. I think when comedy albums were happening, and his act was so visual, 
you would hear like funny things on his album, but you wouldn't get the whole picture. But mm. you would you would hear the laughter of people who did get the whole picture, and so you're like, we got to go see him. I see, and I think that's how he worked it out, or like, or that's I think that's one of the things he brings up in his book is um, uh, just that that disconnect kind of made audiences want to go out and see him more. Nice. Any secrets like that? But everyone has a Instagram page to put up clips now. So are you, are you reading anything in right now besides the vibe? Um, well, I want to do the, I started the Schwarzwater book. Mm. I have, um, I think it's a Romanian philosopher, uh, Charin or something like that. I can't remember. It's, it's like Emil, Emil Charin, like C, and his last name is like C I O R A N. And it's basically uh, about a guy. It's the, the ramblings and musings of, or in philosophy, of a. Um, his, his whole point of view is all about like failure all about the nothingness of it all. It's very nihilistic. I guess it's nice. nihilistic. Um, but it's just... It's just his philosophy or is he... Yeah, like, it's like it's like the idea... It's an idea of a, a guy who is like, you know what, I'm going to do nothing. Mm. And he went about life in that, I think, from what I gathered, uh, he went about it religiously of doing nothing and just... Um, is it a long book? He's he wrote several books, uh, but it, the one it's not novel form, right? It's like no, it's it's philosophy. it's more like it's more like an essay. Yeah, yeah, kind of like an essay, essay so like is, a yeah. four thousand page essay. Not even that many pages. You don't need that many pages. Okay. Um, I'm gonna have to get that from you after this. Emil uh, Charin, I think. I, feel, I don't know how yeah. Romanians say shit. You don't read a lot of Camus, right? I do like Camus, but it's been a long time. Camus speaks to me. Absurdism. Well, yeah, nihilistic. Well, he was also... Well, I mean, anyone who has a bit of a... a I, like, I like a darkness tinged with light. So I think Camus hits that. Because he's like, you know, everything's meaningless. So the only meaning you have is what you make, right? Yeah. And who else has... Uh, Kierkegaard is like that. I haven't read his stuff. Soren Kierkegaard, yeah. But I should. So I could be smart, like John Well, you know, it's just, this is just me naming names. It's nothing about being smart. It's all, it's all pointless. But you read their stuff. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm, uh, well, I, I mean, I feel like a lot of it roots back to, if you want to get biblical again, Ecclesiastes, which is like one of my favorite books of the Bible. Did did we already touch on this last time? No, no. Not Ecclesiastes. Don't eat shellfish. It's, (laughs) <laughs> from there i think uh no a lot of the rules about food are going to be like leviticus or deuteronomy or something oh, I think. okay sorry mr deacon son <laughs> well you know my father he was a he was a he was crazy and so there was a a church story where he wigged out in front of a bunch of kids telling about how they're all going to hell or some bullshit he, he had a real proper episode. That's every church, man. You <laughs> turn from sin. Well, that's, that's how you become deacon. <laughs> yeah, turn from sin. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta like, you gotta let it fly. Yeah. All right, mate. Anything else we should uh, end this? Probably. I don't think we need to end on that. What about you, Dorian? What are you getting into? Oh man. What do you have to go, do? Get home? I mean, I think we might be running kind of long now. But that's it. I uh, I'm I've been I just read this book. I think you saw in the. I don't know. If you seen, maybe you didn't. It was back in my car. There's a book about Stu Finer. I hope that no one stole the book from your car because I asked you if you had if you had anything in your car. I have two books. That one and the biography of Richard Nixon. That I've. That's gone. Your car has been busted into Fuck. now. But yeah, the Nixon book. I've been. I started a long time ago, and I just put it down. Um, I read this biography about this guy named Stu Finer. It's like. It's one of, I guess it's like a trashy thing. I, he's, he like, he, in the 90s, 80s, 90s, he was like a gambling guy. He was giving out like sports picks over the radio. And then he joined Barstool, uh, Barstool Sports, which is like a content thing on YouTube. 
I don't know if you're familiar with them, but Barcel Sports. Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah, so he's like a he works for them now, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna read about his life, but it it was kind of like it's whatever. Don't ever need to read again. I'm actually trying to look for one of those public those that <laughs> take a book, leave a book. I want to find one of those little tiny libraries. Yeah. And then put it in there. The cover is just like a young him with like two chicks in bikinis. You bought that book. I bought it from Alpha Amazon. Knowing the cover. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder what did you think you would gather from it? Well, I just want to read about a story about like a guy that made himself a millionaire being a gambling addict, lost everything and build it up again. I like degenerates. No, you like money success stories. Not always. I also like like degenerates. Like this like is this drug, is where I mean. We I guess they're all in. all are connected with like money, but like drug dealers, prostitutes, stuff like that. Like I feel like when when the I swim in failure, you swim in success. When people that's from the like thing. the fringes of society succeed, like I like it. Even when like everybody else is like, oh, that sucks. Was he on the fringe of society? Huh? The guy with the two bikini-clad women was he on the fringe Kinda, of society? Yeah, he's a he's he's a, he's a gambling. Addict. Is that the fringe of society? Yeah. Where did he come from? He's a uh, came from, I think Boston, Jewish background, poor working class. But he saw how his dad's life was. Okay, I can dig that. He, he that makes that I can dig with that. I, he he basically saw how like sports affected his dad and how it could ruin basically his life, which he was just like, and I guess he wanted to be. I think part of it is he wants to be connected to his dad, so he got really good at like picking odds and stuff like that. And folks, you know. that's why you don't need a dad because they fucking put you up to shit like you that. Just gamble, baby. Yeah, have them die early. That's yeah. the key. I read that book. I read that Sam Talent book right before that, I think. And then, uh, yeah, I don't remember what else I read recently. I do want to read a uh, reread Peter Pan. I always found that to be a sad story. Why? The same reason why you found the masquerade. Do not even begin. It's the same thing. It's Do the same thing. He begin. never grow, he never grows up. And he kind of lives this life where everybody just leaves him because everybody around him grows up. All you have to do is just watch Hook and you're good All to go. All children grow grow old except Peter. I think it's the first line in the book. Wow. Shout out to Peter That's Pan. Was that is that Victorian literature? What is, where is Peter Pan from? Fuck, I don't know, dude. You look, look it up. up. You're better at it. We're gonna end on this. Petey Pan. All right. When was Peter Pan written? All I know is Michael Jackson loved him. <laughs> Neverland. It's probably written like 1904. Oh. I was going to be way off. I was Wait. about to say like. Oh, 19, it started as a play and then 1911, 1904, a play, the 1911, a novel. If I got the, if I'm. Sounds good to me. Huh. That's kind of cool. Yeah. All right. I guess we'll end it there. Yeah. I'll see you in a couple months. Uh, never maybe. grow up. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we'll start a weekly podcast, just the two of us. Probably not. All right. Thank you guys for listening. Hey, subscribe to a John Beard's uh, reading. Yeah, YouTube. listen to me read poems while I'm. Drinking Is it just wine. called John Beard? Channel? I have no clue what it's called. I just post things on it when I'm drinking and reading to my computer. Okay, so you send me a link and I will uh, post right, cool. it in the description. All right, thank you. Peace out, everyone. Bye, y'all.